Hi guys, in this video we'll take a look at introduction to arithmetic sequences, arithmetic sequences formulae, examples, and then we'll finish with a summary. So what exactly are arithmetic sequences? Let's suppose we start with a given number and add another number repeatedly. Let's say our first term is 2, and then our next term is 5, our next term will be 8, and then from that we'll have 11, and this sequence will continue. We had our first term 2, and then at each stage we added a constant number, and that number in this case is plus 3. The sequence this generates is called an arithmetic sequence. Let's say instead we had a first term of 3 quarters, and then our next term was 5 over 4, and then our next term was 7 over 4, and our next term was 9 over 4, and so on. In this case, we are adding the same constant number, which is 1 half. Or we could have as our first term 4, and then minus 1, and then minus 6, and then minus 11, and so on. In this case, we will be subtracting each time, and the number that we're subtracting will be 5. But suppose we'd like to find the value of the hundredth term in the sequence. Again, let's say we're considering the sequence which goes 2, and then 5, then 8, and then 11, and so on. Again, we can clearly see we are adding a constant number each time, and in this case it is again plus 3. But these are only the first four terms. If we wanted to find the hundredth term, this may be quite a difficult process. We might decide to calculate the value of every term up to the hundredth term in order to find its value. As we saw, we had 2, 5, 8, 11, and so on. In this case, we have our first four terms. And then we could continue. We've got, say, 14 is our next term, 17 is the one after, but to get to the hundredth term, this goes on for quite a while. It turns out we get all the way up to 290, and then 293, 296, and finally for our one hundredth term, 299. So again, this is our 97th term, 98th term, 99th term, and the one hundredth term. This is a very slow process, even slower if we wanted to find the 1,000th term, or the 1 millionth term. So we'd like to find a direct formula for calculating each term. Let's try and determine the arithmetic sequences formula. There are some important values that characterise arithmetic sequences. Let's say this time we start with 3, and then we have 7 as our next term, and then 11, and then 15. Again, we can see that each time we are adding a constant number, and in this case, this constant number is plus 4. Now, the two important values that characterise this sequence are the first term, which is 3, and also what we call the common difference, which is plus 4. Once we know these two characteristic values, we can determine the whole sequence. We refer to these characteristic values using certain letters. We write A for the first term, and we write D for the common difference. We can write a general sequence using sequences notation. In general, if we have our same sequence 3, 7, 11, 15, in sequences notation, we would write u subscript 1 for the first term, and then u subscript 2 for the second term, u subscript 3 for the third term, and u subscript 4 for the fourth term, and so on. We often refer to certain terms of the sequence by the subscripts in this notation. So for the same sequence, 3, 7, 11, 15, and we label them as u1 up to u4, then we will call this the second term, 
because there is a 2 in the subscript of the u. And similarly, we call this the fourth term. We refer to the general term of the sequence as the nth term. So in this case, it turns out with our sequence 3, 7, 11, 15, that there is an nth term expression. And that is that when you put in n, you get out 4n minus 1 as the value of the sequence. So again, to be clear, we have our u1, u2, u3, u4, and un as our general nth term. And the reason we call it the nth term is because we have our first term, second term, third term, fourth term, and again, associating with the subscript, we have our nth term. We'd like to be able to find out how to calculate 4n minus 1 as the nth term in general for a general arithmetic sequence. The general formula for the nth term can be found recursively. If we write our general sequence in terms of a's and d's, the way it works is we start with our first term a, and then each successive term we add on a d. So we get a plus d for our second term, we have a plus 2d, and this will continue. And the way we can find the nth term is by considering the terms as we go along. We have our first term, our second term, our third term. And if we look at the coefficient of the d's, we can see that, say, for the third term, the coefficient of the d is 2. For the second term, the coefficient of the d is technically 1. We have 1d. And for the first term, we have the coefficient of d as being 0. We have 0 d's. And so for the nth term, we would expect our general nth term value to be a, as we can see, which is common to all of these terms, plus n minus 1 d, because this fits the pattern that we see before. For the third term, we have 2 d. For the second term, we have 1 d, and so on. So for the nth term, we expect to have n minus 1 d's. And so this means that our nth term formula is as follows. The value of u sub n is equal to a plus n minus 1 d. This allows us to find the terms of an arithmetic sequence directly. Suppose we have our sequence 3, 7, 11, 15 and onwards. Let's say we want to find the hundredth term, u100. All we need to do is to substitute that 100 into our nth term expression. We can see that the value of a in this case is 3, that's the first term, and then we have the plus n minus 1d, so we have the 100 minus 1, and this is multiplied by the value of d. Well, d is the common difference, and each time we're adding 4, so the common difference is 4, and therefore we have 3 plus 99 times 4. The value of 99 times 4 is 396. And so the value of the hundredth term is going to be 399. This process will work for any term we want. If we wanted the millionth term, we could find it very quickly using this expression. Let's take a look at some examples. Our first example says, given an arithmetic sequence with first term 3 and common difference minus 2, we are asked to find the 100th term of the sequence. Our first step is to recall the formula for the nth term. We have that the nth term un is equal to a plus n minus 1d. Our second step is to substitute in the values in the question. We are looking to find the 100th term of the sequence and therefore we consider u100. Then we have our first term as being 3, so therefore a is 3. n minus 1 is going to be 100 minus 1, due to the value of n. And then d is going to be minus 2, because the common difference is minus 2, and that is what d is. Our third step is to write down the answer. We perform some simplifications and we get that u100 is equal to 3 and then we have the minus 2 times 99. We have swapped the order of the 2 and the 100 minus 1 because of the minus.
We put the minus in front just to perform the simplification. And therefore, by calculating the value of 2 times 99, we have 3 minus 198. And therefore, the value of our 100th term is minus 195. Our second example tells us that given an arithmetic sequence with first term 10 and common difference 6, we're asked to determine if 281 and 436 are part of the sequence, and if they are, find which term of the sequence that they are. Our first step is to recall the formula for the nth term. We have that u sub n, the nth term, is equal to a, the first term, plus n minus 1 d, and d is the common difference. Our second step is to substitute in the values for a and d in the question. We have that un, our nth term, is equal to 10, our first term, plus n minus 1 times by 6. By multiplying out the brackets, we have 10 plus 6n minus 6. And this is 6n plus 4. This is the formula for the nth term in this situation. Our third step is to consider the first value and attempt to solve for n. We're going to set our nth term expression equal to the first value in the question, 281. So when we do this, we get 6n plus 4 is equal to 281. By subtracting, we get 6n is equal to 277. And then by dividing and perhaps using a calculator, we get that n is approximately equal to 46.2 to one decimal place. Our fourth step is to state the conclusion for the first value. Because 46.2 is not a whole number, it is the case that 281 is not a term. Because if it was, it would be the 46.2th term, which isn't a term in the sequence. We only deal with whole number terms. Otherwise, most numbers are terms in arithmetic sequences. It's just a case of finding which decimal number that they correspond to. But as we say, we only deal with whole number terms to generate the sequence. Our fifth step is to consider the second value in attempt to solve for n. So again, we're going to set 6n plus 4 equal to our second value in the question. And the second value in the question is 436. By subtracting, we get that 6n is equal to 432. And by dividing this time, we get that n is precisely equal to 72. Our sixth step is to state the conclusion for the second value. Because 72 is a whole number, we know, therefore, that 436 is a term in the sequence. Our seventh step is to write down the corresponding value of n. In the question, we were asked that if we found a term which was in the sequence, we were asked to find which term of the sequence that they are. And this is the n value, so we have that n is equal to 72. Our third example says that given the second term of an arithmetic sequence is 15 and the eighth term is 63, we are asked to find the first term and the common difference. Our first step is to recall the formula for the nth term. We have as our formula that u sub n is equal to a plus n minus 1d. Our second step is to form an equation using the second term. We know that the value of u sub 2 is equal to 15. This is given in the question. The second term of an arithmetic sequence is 15. And therefore, we can substitute this in to form an equation. We get that a plus 2 minus 1 d is equal to 15. That is the second term. And therefore, by simplifying the 2 minus 1, we have a plus d equals 15. Our third step is to form an equation using the eighth term. We know that the value of u8 is equal to 63. 
and therefore we can form an equation a plus 8 minus 1d is equal to 63. And therefore we have that a plus 7d is equal to 63. Our fourth step is to solve the simultaneous equations. Let's go with our second equation first. Write a plus 7d is equal to 63. And our first equation we found was that a plus d is equal to 15. Now, the reason why I've written them in this order is I'm going to subtract to remove the a's. And therefore, I end up with 6d is equal to 48. This gives us that d is equal to 8 by dividing, and therefore we can find the value of a using our second equation, because we can substitute it in to find that a plus the value of d, which is 8, is equal to 15, and therefore we can calculate the value of a is equal to 7. Our fifth step is to write down the answer. We have found that a is equal to 7 and d is equal to 8. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level math resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snapify smiley face and together let's make A-level maths a walk in the park.